Thank you for coming to Productive Corporation's 2-Minute Tech. Today we're going to take a look at implementing SPX encryption on the Sophos XG firewall. So today we'll look at the SPX encryption available in the new Sophos XG firewall. But more specifically, we'll look at the requirements for configuring this feature, and then we'll look at it in action. So what is SPX? SPX stands for Secure PDF Exchange. SPX lets you grant your end users the ability to send secure encrypted email messages through this appliance. And SPX can also be used as part of a data protection policy. We'll save that for another YouTube. So how does it work? Well, <clears throat> unencrypted email messages are sent through the email appliance. The, the email appliance is notified by the um, email message that it needs to be encrypted. The appliance then will convert the uh, email message along with any attachments to a PDF document and then encrypt it with the password. So we talk about encryption. The Sophos uses either 128-bit or 256-bit AES encryption, which we all know is a FIPS compliant standard. The password it uses um, has to be communicated from the sender to the recipient. And there's a couple of different ways that Sophos does that. We'll discuss those. One of the ways is the, the sender will specify uh, the password to be used. Um, another way is to have the recipient specify it. Uh, one of those ways uh, includes the recipient connecting to the SPX secure email portal and defining their own password. And then the other way is to have the appliance generate passwords for recipients. They can do either a one-time password or a password that may be good for, say, 30 days, which is a default. The um, next thing we'll talk about here is the configuration required. So one of the requirements is you must have the correct subscription on your firewall uh, <clears throat> so that you have the email protection module. With the email protection module configured to uh, scan email and attachments, the only other thing you need to do is to configure the SPX parameters. Um, for security purposes, there are certain attachments that cannot be encrypted in a PDF, such as um, zip files or executables, batch files, and so on. Uh, there is a list on the Sophos website. The um, on-premise mail server or a mail client that supports SMTP using port 25 only is required to use this feature. So if you're using uh, SMTP uh, with Outlook or Thunderbird, you must be using port 25 in order for the appliance to recognize the email message and uh, do the encryption. So those are, those are some of the requirements. Let's just look at the configuration real briefly, and then we'll look at an example. So here's our email protection module, and uh, these top two sections here are for configuring your email, and then these next two here are for configuring the SPX. So when we look at the SPX template, we're going to see that we've created a template called Productive Corp, which is the name of our company. And, um, <clears throat> We're going to use AES-128, but we could use 256. We just chose 128 for the heck of it. Password type, again, we talked about the four different ways of generating passwords, sender, recipient, or have the appliance do it for you. But we're going to use the uh, generate one-time password for every email. And then down here, you can see that there is some HTML mockup and hyperlinks used, which provide recipient instructions for obtaining an email passwords and um, for looking at the um, uh, the format of the PDF email message they receive. Uh, this can be customized. There are additional variables that can be used here as well. The other piece is the SPX configuration. And then the configuration is where we're going to define uh, the password uh, <clears throat> and the SPX portal settings. So in the, um, in the method that we chose to uh, generate password, uh, we're going to allow that password to be used for 30 days. After 30 days, it would automatically get changed. 
the system will generate a new one and forward that on. And the recipient has 10 days to uh, register that uh, password. And actually all they really need to do is to use that password with, within the first 10 days after that email is received. Um, and then it's good for 30 days. We can extend that out. It's customizable as you can see here. And the error notifications are sent to the sender only. So um, one of the things here I should point out is that at any time, if the recipient chooses or the sender chooses to change that password, this is where we would do it. We would just put the recipient email address here and hit the reset button. And so in doing that, now we will show you what it looks like. So let's get over to the page. Let's start out with the um, sender's email address. So here I have a structured email already built up with three attachments in it. Let's look at those attachments real quick. We got a PDF attachment that has a, a <clears throat> certificate information in it. And uh, we have a spreadsheet that has some information in it that we want to convey to the recipient. And um, the third thing we have is a word attachment that has a secret formula in it. So we want to make sure that this is encrypted when it goes out because we don't want to give up our secrets now, do we? So there's our three attachments. We also have some additional text here. So what's going to happen is I'm going to, first I'm going to mark this for encryption and that's going to signal the to the firewall that this message needs to be encrypted. So let's go ahead and send it. Now, if this was the first encrypted email I sent, the system would generate an email password and it would send it to me, the sender, which is right here. It's up to me how I get this password over to the recipient. I could forward it to another email address or I could text message it, I could fax it, or I could just communicate it verbally in a, in a voice call. So for right now, we're just going to take it and we're going to copy it. And then what we're going to do here is we're going to go down to the recipient email. And there you can see there is the recipient. I just received an email that's encrypted. And if I try to preview it, the beauty here is that the preview will not work because it knows it requires a password. So we can't cheat. So let's go ahead and open that PDF up. And then let's pop in our password right here. Paste it, say OK, and there you go. There's my email text, and here's my attachments over here. And as you can see, they are now readable. They were encrypted in transport, and now they're being decrypted as I read them. And there's my secret formula there. We don't want to divulge that. So now you see how it's done. And now you see the proof. So that's how they do it, SPX encryption in the Sophos firewall. Thank you for coming to Productive Corporation's 2-Minute Tech. If you need additional product information, configuration, or implementation services, please contact us at help at productivecorp.com, 800-726-4099. We are here to help.